Hey, welcome to the L. Russ Show. My name is L. Russ, and I am a number one best selling author and master coach. My intention is to inspire, educate, and motivate you with weekly content featuring amazing guests and solo episodes. Visit my website, lrust.com, to learn more about me, my courses, free master classes, partner discounts, and much more. Enjoy the show. Vasavi Kumar, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, Elle. Thank you so much for having me, and I am doing great. Look, everybody needs to just, I mean, and we'll talk about this at the end of the show. And of course, uh, you know, we'll put it in the show notes, but everyone go to V-A-S-A-V-I-K-U-M-A-R.com. Her website is awesome. Such a powerhouse. Listen, you are a very bold person. You're a public speaker. Mm -hmm. You train people to be bold. I mean, this is your, I mean, you're out there with the utmost confidence How'd you get here? Were you, did you always have that energy with you? Is there something you had to shift along the way to become this? Tell us about your little origin story and your journey to where you are now. I really do remember having this type of confidence when I was a kid. It didn't last very long because, you know, life happens mm-hmm. where we're then taught that all the things that make us us are somehow wrong now and not good enough. And so we suppress those parts. But I have a very clear memory from my childhood for, for many years, you know, maybe up until 15, it, you know, it, it got very difficult through the later years of my teenage and young adulthood. But I, you know, grew up in front of the camera. My father and mother were immigrants from India and they came over in 1974. So my dad had, you know, got a camcorder the, when my sister was born in 78. And then I was born in 82. My dad was like, he was, he was all about that immigrant experience. You know, he wanted to capture our every move. So I grew up in front of a camera. I grew up with a parent who was very interested in my words, very interested in me being theatrical and performative. And while that has its pros and cons, that's that confidence uh, that, that, that I am worthy of being looked at and I am worthy of attention was something that was given to me at a very young age. By my father. You're, you're like the OG of reels. You're doing reels and selfies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, when people tell me that they're afraid of the camera or they're afraid, and I'm like, but that's your reflection. That's your reflection, literally. So you're telling me you don't like your reflection. When someone says they don't feel comfortable on camera, it's really that they don't feel comfortable seeing themselves on camera. And if you have a problem seeing yourself, that tells me a lot about your relationship that you have with yourself. Absolutely. And one of the things, you know, when I'm chatting with people, they they'll do an interview for the first time. Maybe they like finally got on a podcast to talk about their business and then they won't listen to it. They're afraid to listen to it. And I've had these conversations with people who've even come on my show in the past. And I've said, you know, at some point you're going to have to bite the bullet. And at first it's gross and weird and yucky. No one wants to hear their own. Like it, it's a moment, you know I mean? I've been on camera. like the first time you're like, ah, you know, I, I get it. I get it. But usually what happens is the the person listens to it and they're like, you know what? That wasn't as bad as I, they're yeah. always a little bit happier than they thought they would be. Yeah. I think we, we got to give ourselves a benef- benefit of doubt. We got to allow ourselves to hear and see ourselves in a new way. Right. Because think of this, you were, you were shining bright when you were a kid, you were like, just so radiant. You were uniquely you. And then little by little, little by little, you should, you go inwards and inwards and inwards and inwards. When the best parts of you are no longer shining bright. So of course, when you start to get that confidence boost, and of course, when you start to see yourself in a new, improved, fresh, enlivened way, it's going to feel a little weird, but deep down, you know, that that's who you've always been. You know, uh, sort of like for the naysayers out there, sometimes with confidence, I always tell people, listen, it's, it's, it's not inherent. It's the sum of the thoughts you think and the actions you take. And then people are like, yeah, but you were probably born confident. Probably like you, you might get this comment too. Like, well, you were inherently this way. Like you had this built in, but I would say I, my experience reflects yours, which is then life happens and all the shit gets thrown of you and you do get beat down. It's just that you and I might know a little bit more about the natural feeling of coming back from that, but it's always attainable. So for the people listening, I know you, you're always like, Hey, you didn't come here to be timid and shy, right? You came here to live your truth. How do you start to activate people to get bold? I mean, I think it really starts with the acknowledgement and the honesty, first of all, with yourself and with me that you have watered yourself down. Okay, great. 
we don't need to dissect it and analyze it and do all that. You can go to your therapist for that, which by the way, I am a licensed therapist, but I, I don't practice formally. So I always tell people to please have your therapist that you're doing that with. So you and I can work on more of your vocal expression. But then what I would have you do is not only write out your story, but write out, you know, of uh, you know, answers to prompts, just answers to questions, right? Like what's your happiest memory? Write out the answer to that. And then I want you to read it to me because how you deliver a script or how you deliver your life story says a lot about that spark within and whether we really got to reignite it. Because here's the thing, most of us are looking for the spark outside of us. And what I want everyone listening to realize is that you are the spark. You literally are the spark. It's not about something outside of you sparking you, which by the way, huge fan of being inspir- you know, inspired and motivated by people, places, and things that are awesome. That's great. But you know, the, the, the smallest things can inspire us. But I think oftentimes we outsource our power to outside things. And I want people to know that they are the spark. So if you want to be bold, the first thing that I would say to you is start being bold in your everyday interactions where you would normally maybe, you know, not, you know, okay, let's say perfect example. I went out to eat on Sunday. Okay. I went to one of my favorite Mexican restaurants. The server brought us our check and I looked at it and it was the wrong check. And I mean, obviously I'm not going to pay a check that's not mine. You know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people usually feel very timid in that situation or they They feel like, oh, I don't want to bother this person. And in my mind, the way I think is, and it's not like, I think people think when you, when, when they hear bold, they think you have to be rude. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no, being bold is just, just saying what it is, just speaking up. And so our, our server, I think her name was Janine. Um, I said, Hey, Janine. And I go, and I go, Hey, I go, I think you gave us the wrong check. And she was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's all good. You know, it's like, you see, like being bold doesn't mean that you're bitchy, right? Like I, I want to just make that, I think people hear bold and then they think like, Oh, you, you're going to be really mean or nasty. And it's like, you can bring your personality to any conversation. And what you're going to find is that you're awesome. And what you're going to find is that you're super friendly and kind. And that doesn't mean that you are someone who doesn't have boundaries. And that doesn't mean that you are someone who is unkind. You very much have self-respect and you have boundaries and you have no problem standing up for your standards, what is true, what is real for you, and still honoring the dignity of another human being. Both can exist. I think people, yeah, they, they, in these moments, like with the speaking up and just being a little bold or being like, Hey, I didn't want that. Or this wasn't how I like to cook. Even just a simple scenario like that. It's so funny because like in those moments, it's, it's, it's all about like, I don't want to rough on you, but then it breeds resentment. You have start to have like com- compounded resentments that build up over time. <laughs> and you never get what you fucking want? Yes. Like, I, yeah. you know, then it becomes just like, so it seems like it's saving you and it's fucking hurting you as we both know. And then isn't it interesting too? And I'm sure you see this. I find with confidence that like some everyone has some part of their life that they're confident. Like I know someone who's a confident artist can get up there in front of his paintings, but can't ask a girl out. Right. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you can't transfer it to one area or the other. Right. And it's funny how when you, you know, cause you, you're coaching people to really find their voice and, and you're a public speaker and so am I, but you're probably more of a pro and have more history with it. But when people are telling a story to a friend or, you know, someone they're comfortable with, They have the same animation and level of passion and they just freeze elsewhere. And then the intention is on them in strange environments, but they still had it somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like, we're, we're, it's, it's creating safety within ourselves, no matter where we go. Here's the thing. When you're with your friend, it's two things. It's your friend is someone that makes you feel safe and something about her or him makes you feel safe within. Now, the goal is to that that feeling of safety that you have within to share your truth with that friend, cultivate that feeling of safety everywhere you go. You generate it from within. Generate it from within, no matter where I go. And okay, I'm going to share what makes my mother and I very different. My mother and I thinks everyone is out to get her. (laughs) I, I, I offered her to get her an at home massage. She's a primary caregiver for my father who's progressively declining. And I said, let me find you a massage therapist. She goes, okay, but make sure that they're a certified massage therapist. And I was like, why wouldn't they be? She goes, well, I don't want them to scam you. What if you find someone on Google and they're not a real massage therapist? Right. Everything is right to the worst case scenario. Yeah. And I get that. If you've gone through a lot of trauma in your life, which my mother definitely has, you train your brain to be vigilant so that no harm will ever happen to you Mm -hmm. again. 
I get it. But that doesn't mean I have to get sucked into it. Right. So the the reason why we're different is because I don't think that way. I think I'm going to get what I want because right. people love to give to me. People love to put a smile on my face. People love to feel my gratitude because when I am grateful, I make people feel so good about who they are. And that is true. I know how to make somebody feel so good about the most specific things. And by the way, I'm saying this with confidence because like, that's when you know your assets and you know what you bring to the table, right? That, that's, that is the confidence. I'm confident because I know who I am and I know what I bring to the table. I also know my toxic traits. I also know my flaws. I also know when I can be really resentful. I also know how I can be manipulative. I know how I can be all of those things. I know how to make you feel like shit. If I want to make you feel like shit. It's not just, I know how amazing I am. No, I also know how shitty I can be. And that, there is power in that. 100%. It's a level of heightened awareness. And I think also accountability, taking responsibility for one's own faults and also wonderful characteristics. It's That's like that true scene. confidence. And, but because that, what are we actually all afraid of? Oh my God, they're going to see me. They're going to see what an yeah. asshole I am. Well, you know, if, if I already know that I'm an asshole, you can't really see, see something about me that I don't already know. It is so funny how the protective uh, self-preservation vibe always goes to the worst case scenario and the fearless, confident vibe always goes to not only with the best case, like you mentioned, like I can't wait for it to work out exactly the way I want it to, but also open to unknown possibilities. Yes. Right? Like, Like this or something better. Like I'm open to that, like knowing that there's even a level beyond your best case. Yeah. I mean, our, our thinking is so limited, right? So my, you know, you know, my, well, I don't know who said this, but my father would always say, every time you make plans, God laughs. And I love that because I'm so, and sometimes I will literally laugh out loud and say to myself, Voss, you are so small in your thinking. Don't you know that I have so much more in store for you? You know? So it's like, I allow myself to dream. I allow myself to visualize. I, um, I would love to share this with you actually, Elle, I've been having this visual of like, like fall is really one of my favorite seasons. Right. Mm-hmm. And I just keep picturing myself because I'm single right now. I'm, I'm picturing myself meeting somebody, meeting somebody and, and, and having the most beautiful, safe, amazing love that I think I've been wanting for a while. And, 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 and the reason why I'm sharing this out loud, because, because I think most of us do not allow ourselves to say our dreams, our wishes, our wants out loud. And I want to, your audience to know that they are not silly for wanting what they want or feeling what they feel or having their wild dreams. You know, if, it, if it's coming to you and it's coming through you, it is meant for you. And people are afraid of declaring something like that. Like, hey, this is something, you know, because they're like, but what if it doesn't happen? And then everyone will laugh at me kind of thing. Yeah. And it's so and it's- fearless to just go, I don't give a shit. I'm just putting yeah. out what I want. Like mm-hmm. it does or it doesn't. I'm not taking checks and balances over here. There's no fucking scorecard, guys. Exactly. That's exactly right. Like I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it for me. You know, it's and yeah. And I, I just I can't wait for you to have it. And you know what? Like this fall, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know. Also, I- just side note on fall. So I'm from the Midwest, but I've been living in California for like 30 years. Oh. I love fall. And so most of the year here, I mean, like it's fall. I mean, it's like this perpetual fall and it's just such an extended juicy yumminess. Um, I don't know if you've ever sort of spent the like fall here, but the fall winter, but it's like a, this wonderful extended fall. And I do, I love that time so much. And it's such a cozy time to find love. And so let's, I love it. I'm putting out the vibe there for you. Thank you. And you know what? I love that you're in California. My, my friends live in Manhattan beach Manhattan mm-hmm. Beach, like this time, like oh, that August, September, it's so beautiful there. It's so, so beautiful. So let's talk about some of the 180s of people you've worked with who didn't have a voice, who had all of this mm, internal shit dialogue we're talking about and was able to soar to great heights and find their voice. I'm thinking of one person that has come to mind and he came out to his parents at a very young age. And um, really struggled with, you know, his anxiety in relationships because he just kept gravitating towards people who made him feel unsafe. He came out to his parents at a young age and they kind of said to him, oh, you know, maybe maybe you just need to maybe you just think boys are handsome. And so he basically closeted himself yeah. for, eight, for eight years. And um, this is a dear fr- client and now friend of mine. And oh, my God, he's gone on to perform a one man show. He's writing <sighs> a book. Yeah. Like he's just really he's able to separate himself from his parents. 
And I think that's huge. And people don't want to necessarily do that work. But that's really the thing that we need to be doing is that separating ourselves from our parents, separating ourselves from the people in our lives, like become your own person. Like, well, yes, that's tough in a lot of cultures because there's, you know, there's certain cultures around that where it's just not right. You know, some people live with their family until they're married in the United States. People be like, Mm-mm, you're not doing that. Get out of the house. <laughs> well, I house. mean, I, and I completely understand that. And, you know, I think we have to find our freedom in our own way. I'm completely aware of the fact that not everyone has the luxury of doing that. But all I want to say is that if you do have the luxury of being able to do that, please don't be a hostage to programming. No, one, that's why I brought it up to yeah. consider, reconsider being hostage to cultural programming, even if you are from one of those cultures. I think I see that struggle a lot with people. I knew I talked to someone once who she really, really, really wanted to move to a certain place. But I said, I said well, why wouldn't you? She goes, it was because of my mom, but she was already like 34. Okay. So I was like, well, mm-hmm. I said, well, hold on a second. What, what's is it about your mom? Is she ill? Is she no? But she's, you know, she's divorced and lonely. She'd be upset. It, you could tell it was guilt coming from the mother for her to stay, and that bummed me out in that moment because, you know, my mother's the kind of mother who would go you spread your wings. I'm not going to keep you here for my own selfishness, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and so that is such a, you know, those are delicate things, but. Yeah, I agree with you. Don't be a prisoner to that. And that's why I brought it up because it, it may be harder in some cultures than others. And if you're out there and part of the culture, like, you know, sometimes you got to break some norms to get what you want in life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did. I got um, I got divorced and it was probably the hardest thing ever because, you know, I, my parents basically just emotionally cut me off, you know, and they're like, well, if you're going to get divorced, we're not going to basically have anything to do with you. So it was very difficult. And I had to find myself in those 10 years. It was very difficult. But, you know, ultimately, I chose myself. Um, and regardless of what your relationship status or anything like that is, you know, this is the one life that we've been given. So I, you know, when you kind of look at it like that, I don't know, that always seems to wake me up. What are some common themes that you've heard, seen vibes, whatever, from people you've worked with the struggles that happen with people who need to and want to find boldness, don't think they can, what are, you know, there's some common phrases, common things you always hear? Well, yeah, I think a lot of it is just, it. okay, everything is just a watered down version of, watered down form of, am I really worth it? Mm-hmm. That, that's what it all boils down to. Am I really worth the effort? And I think the reason why I come in so hot and so strongly with, yes, you are worth the effort is because I had an experience of that growing up. My mother put an effort into us, into our learning, into our creativity. She invested in our musical talents, artistic talents. My father took us back and forth to tutoring, to this, to that. We would have vacations together. We went to Broadway plays together. My parents showed my sister and I that we were worth it, 100%. We were worth the effort. We were worth the money. We were worth the experiences. Do I wish I would have gotten some emotional support? Do I wish the two of them could have had their shit together so they didn't argue and I didn't have to be their therapist? Yes, but I know that I'm worth it because I saw people put effort into me. Mm. And when it doesn't happen, you have to be, you have to parent yourself. You have to put the effort into you if it didn't come from yes. someone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tell us, um, You, I know you love what you do. I know it. I could just feel it. <laughs> you go to your website and you know, you could just tell. And I love it. And, I love, and you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure in this modern day and age, you might get some shit because you're, you know, you're like, yeah, I'm that bitch too. Like you, you, you use that kind of language where people would be like, don't ever refer to yourself as a bitch if you're a woman, which whatever. Yeah. Um, but tell us, what is it? What are those? What is like one thing that you can think about in all the areas, you know, whether it's a speaker or a coach an MC or all of them go through them. What are the things that you just, what are like you love that you just love about what you get to do? Um, I think I love what I do because I get to be it. I get to be bold. I I, like, you know, you get to fulfill that part of you always. Yeah. I get to always be bold because this is what I do. I get to embody it. (laughs) That's a great, I love that. You know, that's unexpected to hear that. It's a great answer, but it just, yeah. It forces me to be the bold version of myself that I didn't get to be back in the day. Mm -hmm. I have to, I'm a role model now. I can't, I can't fuck around, you know? (laughs) Yeah. No, you gotta, you gotta walk the talk once you're out there fucking publicly talking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Like if I'm out there, you know, everything that I do is always an opportunity to call me forward in my life. 
So I'm very intentional about all the things that I do, whether I went to, you know, plant-based culinary school was so I could learn how to nourish myself through food. I went to yoga teacher training so I could reconnect with my body. You know, I became a therapist because I wanted to understand my mind even more and, and connect with people. So like everything that we do needs to be intentional and we need to be asking ourselves, is this calling me forward in my life? So another example, I wrote my book, Say It Out Loud. And now I'm like, great, what's my next project? I'm going to take a TV screenwriting class in September. If you need any help, let me know. I've done several and I'm an award-winning screenwriter. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I, you know what? I think I did read that, but I thought that to myself. I said, why can't I? Why can't I? Like I, I just binge right. watched the Mindy project by Mindy Kaling. Love her. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I just a little critique. I love Mindy, but like, I don't know. Why does she always place the Indian woman with like the white boy that the girl is just like is obsessed over? Like she's just, it's just a very stereotypical Indian girl. And yes. I just, I, I would do things differently. That's all. I would do things differently. So I'm like, well, let me, let me take a TV screenwriting class and let's see what comes out of me. You know? I love that. And Here's what I love about what you just said. It's something that I talk about in my book about confidence, where I was already a writer. I was doing sketch comedy. I was writing some sitcom pilots. So that was sort of like already my jam. And then I was at a underwater film festival in like Savannah, Georgia, and was chatting with a woman at like the cocktail party. And she said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a writer. And she said, oh, you know what? I'm looking for a writer for this documentary that I have had like 700 hours of footage. I have all this stuff. And then I have like Lauren Hutton over here who's willing to do voiceovers. And like, I don't know how to put this shit together. And now at that moment, I always talk about how I could, and she was like, could, do, would you want to do it? Now at that moment, I could have been like, well, I've never done it before, but I think I could. No, it was just an internal like, I've never done this, but you know what? I've already done enough and have the confidence in myself to learn in order to execute it. I don't know actually how, I've never written a documentary. I've seen a bunch, right? So you get some idea, but it was just confidence in the ability to learn and to be able to do like something, to just go attack something new with confidence. And you have that. And I love that. You're like, no, you know what? I think I can say something different. Let me go take a screenwriting class. Yes, exactly. Because we, why, why do we count ourselves out? Why do we count ourselves out? Like if someone gives you an opportunity to do something, instead of counting yourself out, you got to say yes and just figure it out. That's it. <laughs> right, right. Say yes, figure it out. Um, like, and, I, I, and I did, and it was so much fun and so worth it. And, you know, so different than the things that I wrote before that, or even currently write. And just probably one of the best experiences of my life. And the other part of that story is the notion of, you know what, uh, people be writing screenplays for free. You sometimes have to follow a passion without getting paid for it in order to someday get paid for it. Yes. And that is, <clears throat> you know, like you write your first screenplay, not that someone won't offer you something right away. You're an author, you could have a book deal and a screenwriting deal. But for the most part, you know, people are like, and that um, puts people off. And it's like, yeah, but if you really love to do it, you'd be so compelled to do it. That's you'd want to master the art of it that it wouldn't fucking matter whether you're being paid for it or not. Yeah, well, I, I just shared this in my stories the other day, right? So I did a commercial shoot for VRBO on Sunday. Um, awesome. you know, and um, the pay was like nothing. It was a 10 hour shoot and it was, it was 250 bucks. Okay. And I've gotten paid way more, but I said yes to it because I haven't been acting in a while. And because I had my book stuff and I said yes to it because I wanted to be in the energy of acting. I wanted to be in the energy of creating a commercial. And I said yes to it, regardless of what the money was, because that's what you do when you love something and you want to yeah. be in the energy of it. So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I love that. I so look forward to seeing what happens with you there. And there's, yeah, there's just so much room and we need more female writers of all kinds everywhere. Thank what you. are some other things that you'd like to impress apart upon our audience about being bold, activating one's voice, or actually, you know what? I just want to segue really quickly into actual voice. So one of the things I've noticed in my life, um, that I don't struggle with anymore, but like I had an issue with vulnerability as an alpha female, as we all do. I'm sure maybe you went through your own journey with that. Don't want to be a peer as weak, you know, that kind of thing. And then I finally like kind of relaxed into that. Um, I found that when I was in situations prior where I felt like I was walking in eggshells around a moody person or dating someone, you know, in a situation, mm -hmm. aside from the choked up feeling in the throat, I would get tiny voice, meaning mm. they would always be like, I can't hear you. What? What? And I knew that when people keep asking me, right, like God, it's always it was romantic this situation, but they'd be like, wait, what did you say? Like, because they didn't fucking hear me because it was so 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then meanwhile, I'm on stage doing whatever and I'm projecting, right? Obviously, I have no issues with that. So uh, what can people be aware of in their life with their own actual voice? Is I mean, that would be one of them, maybe <laughs> choked up feeling in the throat. What yeah. are some of the things you've noticed with people? Because I'm sure you've also had to help people find pure power. You're also a voiceover person, power in their voice. So as someone very similar to what you just shared, you know, on stage, I project when I, when I do these interviews, I project, but in relationships with men, I shut down. I, I just shut down and I become this like very meek version of myself. And it's yeah. not like a healthy submission, right? I think there's nothing wrong <laughs> with submission. This is like a very unhealthy, meek, okay, my needs don't matter. I just want you to be happy kind of, kind of situation. So I have lived this. And so I'm not just speaking from theory when I say, I have trained my mind to be okay with that person leaving me. So I'm not in a relationship right now, but the way that I have really found my voice, because a lot of us just do the unhealthy shit that we do because we're afraid of being alone. We're afraid yeah, of rejection. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I, I mean, some may say that this is unhealthy, but I actually don't think it is because what I'm doing is valuing myself to the utmost standard. But yeah. anyone that is in my life, I get myself to a point where it's like, yeah, I would be fine without them because well, I think that- when we get hooked on people, when we get hooked on people, like we get hooked on drugs. And I'm saying this as someone who's four years sober from cocaine and loved it very much. We get hooked on people. We get hooked on what they give us. We get hooked on their approval and then we lose ourselves. And then we become disconnected from ourselves. So in my mind, if I'm okay with L Russ, never talking to me again, if I'm okay with so-and-so never, then, then I know that I could show up as hundred percent myself because I'm not worried about whether you like me or not. That's right, because you enjoy your own company anyway, and it doesn't fucking matter. And why would you want to hang out with someone that doesn't like you anyway? And guess what? The people who are like me, I'm just going to say we're the most enjoyable to be around because at least, you know, I'm there because I want to be. Right, because it's, yeah, because I get that all the time too. And I'm sure you do. It's just like, gosh, you know, it's really nice that you don't blow smoke. It's like, yeah, tell it like it is upfront, direct. Um, There's no, it's authentic. That is what, and that's part of finding one's voice really, right? Not only just the stories you have to tell, But I guess having the voice match a level of authenticity, because that's an engaging speaker, right? Which is what you inspire people to do. I I jokingly say this, and I'm kind of serious, though, when I say it, is that like, listen, I'm not the smartest. I'm not the funniest. I'm not any of that, you know, but one thing you cannot say about me is that I'm not me. And when I'm (laughs) fully being me, and and here's the thing, when you're fully being you and you put a little structure to it, like. For example, I delivered a five minute comedy. I did a comedy class and I delivered a five minute comedy set. It was amazing, right? So my point is be yourself, but put some structure to yourself. So put it through your keynotes, put it through your comedy set, your writing, our our fullest expression of ourself, our creativity. When I say put structure, it's like have like channel it towards something meaningful, you know, because a lot of times we don't know what to do with that energy of fully being ourselves. We're like, oh my God, this is what it feels like to be free. We don't know how, we don't know how that feels so good in our bodies. We don't know what to do with it. So you've got to channel it. That's why I'm always looking for my next project. What's my next thing that I'm doing? You know? I always say that one of the best best things anyone can do to get themselves out of themselves with confidence is even if you don't ever want to perform, take an improv class because it is the safest place to make an ass of yourself. And it's not about being funny, right? It's about following the rules of the game, the structure. And it's always, you know, it's yes and. But it's like the safest place to feel gross. And you're also in your body, you know, because you have to do space work and you're walking around in the thing trying to have a scene and it's gross and yucky, but everyone else also feels the same way. And usually the improv teachers are so great. And the first thing they say at the beginning of class usually is, all right, everybody just stand up, throw your arms up and go, I failed because you're going to fail nonstop in here. And it's not about, right, you know? And so I always say, and it's one of the cheapest ways to kind of ha- get that kind of experience. So I always suggest, hey, if you really need to get out of yourself, try taking an improv class. And it's not because you're there thinking you're going to be a comedian, right? It's for the experience of what I'm, what I'm detailing it as. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Tell us how we can benefit more from you other than your book. Give us the title again, but then tell us how can we coach, work, and benefit more from your wisdom. Awesome. So the name of my book is Say It Out Loud, Using the Power of Your Voice to Listen to Your Deepest Thoughts and Courageously Pursue Your Dreams. I don't know when this episode is going to be aired, but if it's aired by September-ish, I have a bold voice training program that um, starts September 7th. My All my programs are very 
equal. And what I mean is a lot of times you join programs and it feels like there's a clear power dynamic, but I really bring together people from all different calibers and walks of life. And I am leading and I am training, but there's a lot of experiential exercise and role play. And it's just a very fun classroom environment. Um, And it's all online. So anyone from anywhere can join and it's fun. And we have a lot of fun. And usually I find that the reason, like not the reason, but what most people really need is to just have more fun and play in their life. And I'm the most playful person you will meet. So, which is why I'm like, yes, you want to be a part of my program. They're amazing. They're life-changing. I'd run them once a year. It's a six month. Um, and we always result in some sort of in-person um, get together. So it's going to be great where I'm picking my location for this year. So that's bold voice, vasavikumar.com forward slash bold voice. And you can find me on Instagram at my name is Vasavi is my handle. I want to ask you what uh, in your life, there's probably, I know there's a lot, but what stands out as one of, a, one of the favorites of something manifested based on your boldness? Oh, that's so good. Um, you know, okay, can I, can I share, I'm going to share two small things. Okay. Oh well, no. Yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. yeah, sure. So I'm on the cover of Austin women magazine. Um, that came out May of 2022 awesome. and I was, I had a 10 page spread and everything. It's a beautiful cover. And the way that I got that was in March of 2022, two months prior, I was talking to the managing editor and she was interviewing me for a column. And I asked her, I go, well, I said to her, I go, you know, I'm turning 40 in May. And she's like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. I go, you know, you should put me on the cover. That's what I said. <laughs> I said, you should put me on the cover. She goes, really? I was like, yeah. I go, you've never had an Indian woman, have you? And I, and then she was like, oh, no, we did. I go, well, whatever. Even though you've had an Indian woman, have another one. Put yeah, another Indian another. woman. Yeah, put another Indian woman on the cover. So then she wrote back to me a week later and she goes, how would you like to be the May cover girl? See, I love that so much. That is uh, right in line with my motto of never hurts to fucking ask. Just yeah. doesn't. Yeah. And then the second thing would be, um, I went to Playa del Carmen. I love Playa del Carmen. I love Mexico. It's an easy flight. I love the people of Mexico. I went two years ago in August and I said, well, why can't I live here? Like how much is a condo here? You know, I didn't worry about the money or how I was going to get it. And then I went on Facebook <laughs> while I was in Playa del Carmen still. I went to Facebook. I looked up Playa del Carmen Realtors. I said, who can help me find a condo? fully furnished, decorated, ready to rent out. I met a woman, I Sophie, and that was that. And we looked at a few properties, found one, put down the deposit. And just this past month, I was staying in my condo for the past month, the condo that I decided two months. And because I said out loud, why can't I live here? I can. I know because when people, I love that because a lot of times when people are on vacation, someone they're like, I wish I lived here. And then the second question should be, why did I live here? You know? Yep. Yeah. I yeah. love that. That's so dreamy. Yeah. Playa del Carmen, gorgeous. Yeah. So that is, those are two things. My my front cover and my property. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, please visit her website. We'll put everything in the show notes to connect with her also on social media. Thank you so much for joining us and for everyone else. We'll see you next week. Hey listeners, you know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt. Totally addictive, and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye. Visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code PALEO10 for 10% off. I also love and regularly use Paleo Valley products. They make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products. I use the Superfood Greens Powder, Grass-Fed Beef Sticks, the Organ Complex, and their Bone Broth Bars. I love the lemon and apple. I also use their Essential C Complex and more. Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash LRUS for 15% off. 
I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo-approved, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily, from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit PrimalKitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off. 